What would you do if you could learn a new skill in days rather than weeks, months, or years? I mean, think about how much time you'd save. Now, let's learn how. Hi, my name's Tyus. I make videos about how to live a freer life. If you wanna live a freer life, you have to learn the skills to have that level of freedom. So we're gonna talk about how to learn faster today. And if you're interested in living a freer life, hit the subscribe button below so you get more videos about this and that content and it makes me happy. So everybody wins. Now there is a secret formula to learn faster. So let's just dive into that. And well, I'm gonna talk about where it comes from first. I have a bit of a man crush on this guy named Tim Ferriss. Fast Company put him on the list as one of the most innovative business people. He is one of Fortune Magazine's 40 Under 40. He invested and advised on companies such as Uber, Facebook, Shopify, Duolingo, Alibaba, and like 50 other companies. He has sold five of the New York Times and Wall Street Journal's best-selling books. Did I say sold? He wrote them. He can speak five languages. He has a national championship in kickboxing. He has a Guinness World Record in tango. The guy's incredible. How does he do it? Well, people refer to him as what's called a super learner, somebody that can digest information really, really fast. But he wasn't born with this ability. What he does is he interviews top performers all around the world. He does it for his podcasts and he does it for the books that he writes. One of his books, the third book that he wrote, is called The 4-Hour Chef. Now, in that book, it looks like a cookbook. It's designed as a cookbook, but it's really not a cookbook. The book teaches secretly in the pages this magic formula of how to learn at an incredibly fast rate. The formula is this. It's called D-S-S-S, DISS. And it it's an initialism. It stands for deconstruct, that's the D. The first S stands for select. We're gonna go into each one of these. The next one, the next S stands for sequence, and the third S stands for stakes. Okay, so the first letter of the DSSS formula stands for deconstruct, which is all about taking the full picture and breaking it into its tiny, tiny little parts. Imagine having a jigsaw puzzle that is completely finished and now you actually wanna dissect it. You wanna break it up into small pieces. Why? Because if you look at what somebody does, oftentimes it's too complex to understand it all in one picture. Sometimes you've gotta break it into a small little component and go, how does this work? If you look at a golfer, you might say, well, all they're doing is swinging and hitting the ball, but they have studied the backswing, the foreswing, the follow through, the foreswing? I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't golf. Um, or if you're talking to a business owner, there might be lots of little components involved in creating a business from forming an entity, to raising capital, to marketing to customers, to training a staff, and learning each little component is gonna make you much, much more effective and much faster at learning. So things you can look for is first, you're gonna to wanna to look for people that are incredibly good at it because that way you can model their success. You're gonna ask them what components they, they use. And one really great idea is to find somebody that is good at something that really shouldn't be good at something. So let's say somebody is a fantastic runner, but they don't have that runner's body. They weren't built that way. They, they had to train really hard. They don't get to ride on their great genetics. They probably had to train really carefully and really exacting to be able to be so successful at running. That's the kind of person that will help you deconstruct all of the skills that is gonna be necessary in figuring out how to master something new. Once you've deconstructed the skill, then it's time for the next letter in the DSSS strategy, which stands for select. You are now going to select the skills that are best to learn. How do you do that? Well, we use something called the Pareto, distribu Pareto distribution. Wilfredo Pareto, I've talked about him on previous videos. This is a guy that figured out the 80-20 rule. He basically realized that 20% of people own 80% of all the property. And he found that this rule applies to all kinds of things. 20% of employees end up producing 80% of the results for a company. So rather than working on the 80% of the skills that you could learn that only produce 20% of the results, you might as well focus on the 20% of the skills to learn that produce 80% of the results. You might as well focus on the smallest things that have the biggest 
impact. So you wanna look at all the skills that you deconstructed in the first step and identify what is most important to least important. Once you can put that in an order, it becomes really, really clear what skills are most important to focus on. Now, Tim Ferriss says that a lot of people will get the first two steps of this process right, and they mess up on the last two steps. The third step in DSSS, S? How many S's are in there? The third letter, the third S, the second S stands for sequence. And that's all about figuring out what to learn in what order. So if you are learning to play chess, many people learn chess by learning the opening moves. There's a lot of different opening strategies and a lot of people will learn that way because that's how a game begins. However, some of the very best chess players in the world didn't learn that way. Instead, they took all the pieces off the board. Rather than having to learn every single move and every single piece and every single position, they would simply put two pieces on the board and see how those two pieces can interact with each other before adding a third. They changed the sequence of how they learned. Imagine trying to learn a backflip before learning how to jump really high. It's not going to end very well for you. Now, Tim Ferriss became uh, incredible at tango dancing, and one of the ways he did this was not by learning tango in the traditional way. He found experts, he deconstructed the skills, and he found that the very best people would actually learn how to follow before they learned how to lead. And that's how he learned to dance. He learned the girl's part before he learned the boy's part. That way, he knew what it felt like to be a good lead. He knew what the girl should be experiencing and that's what he could provide. It's what made him learn to be an incredible tango dancer in a very short period of time. So one easy way of changing the sequence is to try thinking about learning things in reverse rather than approaching the problem the same way that everybody else has approached it. Think about how do people at the very far end of this, the people, the people that are the very best at a skill set, what are they working on? What are they learning about? And oftentimes that's going to be something that's very simple, very niche, but most impactful. So oftentimes it's about learning things from reverse going to the beginning steps. The last letter in the formula stands for steaks. And I'm not talking about food steaks because my vegan friends would be very upset with me if the end of this was, you know what you need to give yourself at the end? You need to give yourself a lovely steak. Eat that up. Now I'm talking about steaks like motivation, I'm talking about the inspiration, what compels you. A lot of people will try and set up reward mechanisms. They'll say, you know what, once I finish this exercise, I'm going to go out and have a wonderful meal. But people will often do more to avoid loss than they will to gain benefit. So in other words, you will do a lot more to, evade, uh, to avoid pain than you will to achieve pleasure. And so that's the kind of stakes that Tim Ferriss suggests people do. Now there's a lot of ways you can do this. One is an app called Stick, where you can essentially pledge money and say, hey, if I don't succeed at the plan that I'm putting out there, I want you to donate this money to an organization that I don't like. But you don't need an app to do this. You could simply get a ruthless friend to do it too. You could say, you know what? I'm gonna be losing weight, and if I don't succeed, I want you to post these embarrassing pictures of my fat body on the internet uh, because that'll be my punishment if I don't get this moving right in the right direction. But if I do, then you can't post them, right? So you could use embarrassment to your own benefit. You could use the, the fear of loss to your own benefit. A lot of people are afraid of doing this because, well, they don't want the consequence. And that means they're choosing the right kind of consequence. One error I've made in this is choosing consequences that actually benefit or have secondary benefit to my friends. So I'll say like, oh, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to be giving you a hundred bucks. Well, I kind of want my friends to have a hundred dollars. So I'm not that motivated to succeed because I want them to have it. But if, if it was somebody that I didn't want to have have that money, if it was an organization that I didn't like, like let's say the Westboro Baptist Church, I, I think they're a bad organization. And so I wouldn't want them having the money. That's the kind of stakes that you need to put in place. So you need to create the greatest and most powerful motivation to prevent you from making those mistakes. So let's put that all together. So the formula is, uh, forgive me for scrolling, it's DSSS, which stands for deconstruct, select, you're gonna select the 20% that matters most, that produces 80% of the results, sequence, which is going to be, you're gonna learn the best way to learn, you're going to find the most effective way of learning the steps involved, and then you're gonna set stakes, you're gonna set motivations. 
That's it, really. Now, if you're going to put this into play, I kind of want to know what you're going to be doing. I want to know what you're going to be learning. So please comment below on this video to let me know what skill set you've committed to learning using this method. And I want to stay in touch with you about it because I'm curious how well this method works for you. It's worked for me in a lot of things, but I just want to learn from you too. So please share this video. Please subscribe to my videos if you haven't already. Leave that comment below so I can follow up with you on how you're doing in the process of learning using the DSSS method. And I hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye.